All right, so now we're going to move on to video two of section 8.4. And in this video, we are going to multiply and divide rational expressions. <clears throat> All right, so now when we're multiplying and dividing rational expressions, to make this as easy as possible on us, you want to simplify each rational expression first. So this is key. Being able to simplify is key to multiplying or dividing. If you can't simplify, yeah, maybe some questions you won't be able to, like these ones over here, but if you can't simplify or if you don't try to simplify, you're going to make yourself have a little bit harder of a problem. All right, now obviously if they can't simplify, then there's really nothing you can do about it, but you're hoping that they do, and you're hoping that there's something that you can simplify uh, between the two rational expressions. All right, so you can use what we know about simplifying rational expressions when we multiply and divide them. All right, so when we're multiplying and dividing rational expressions, we should be looking to first simplify. All right, now we're just going to do two problems. We're going to do one multiplication and one division, and that's it for this video. All right, so the first problem. If we were to try and multiply this without simplifying, what we would need to do first is we would need to multiply x squared plus x minus 6 and x squared minus 25. We would use a Punnett square, or you can distribute. But we would have to multiply all these first. Right? Then we would get uh, x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 6x squared. Then we would get minus 25x squared. Uh, minus 25x and plus 150. All right, so then this numerator will be this nasty expression of x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 31x squared minus 25x plus 150. All right, then we would have to multiply these two together, and then since it wants us to simplify them, we would have to look to factor this number out, factor this out, which is just going to be incredibly difficult, incredibly hard. So what you to first is you want to not multiply them right away but we're going to erase this all right what you want to do first since you're s and since you need to write all of your fractions in simple form you want to simplify first all right so to simplify first we will factor every part out so i'm just going to write all of my parts that could be factored or look like they might be able to be factored off to the side of different colors all right so i'm going to write um, x squared my uh, plus x minus six i write it off to the side uh, x squared minus 25, I'm going to write it off to the side. And now you don't have to do it this way, but I'm just rewriting all these off to the side just so I can go through and factor all of them. All right, there's nothing that we can factor with this x minus 5. All right, so here, this tells me that they're different signs, so I can write x plus and x minus. Factors of 6 that have a difference of 1 are 3 and 2, and since this is positive, the 3 must follow to positive, so x plus 3 and x minus 2. This, we know it's a difference of two squares, so it'll be x plus and x minus. The square root of 25 is 5, so we can fill that in. And then here, they're the same. They're both going to be positive. So it's x plus and x plus. Factors of 3 to add up to 4 or 1 and 3. All right, so now in our original problem, I'm just going to fill them in. So here, I'm going to write my factored form. x plus 3 times x minus 2. All right, it was over top of x minus 5. There's nothing that we can factor there. Times the purple one factored out to x plus 5 and x minus 5. And then the red one factored out to x plus 1 and x plus 3. All right, so by factoring them first, we can now look and see, can we reduce? Well, here we have an x minus 5 and an x minus 5, and both are numerator and denominator, so we can reduce those. Here we have an x plus 3 and an x plus 3, so we can reduce those. So now we're left with x minus 2 times x plus 5 all over top of x plus 1. Right? And this is actually your final answer. All right? We don't need to multiply x minus 2 and x plus 5 together because if we were to actually go through and graph this, uh, we would need it to be in its factored form anyway. So you don't have to multiply it. Um, you could if you wanted to, but you do not have to. Um, there might be cases depending on if we're adding things later on that you might have to multiply it. Um, but for this one, we don't actually need to. We can just leave it in its factored form. Um, and this is our answer. Now it says state any restrictions. All right, so the restrictions are all of our denominators where they cannot be equal to zero. And that's from the original beginning problem. So this blue one, we couldn't factor out the x minus five. So that could not be equal to zero. So x cannot be equal to five. 
the red one, neither one of these could be equal to zero. So x plus one cannot be equal to zero, or x plus three cannot be equal to zero. So x is equal to negative one, or cannot equal negative one, or x cannot equal to negative three. So x cannot be negative one, negative three, or five. All right, those are all of the restrictions that we had based on the original problem that was given to us. All right, that's it for multiplication. Now there's gonna be one problem that we're gonna do for division. But before we do that problem with division, we're going to go ahead and do a problem with division with just numbers. If I gave you two over three divided by five over one, or let's say five over three, all right? Our rules for dividing fractions are we keep our first one exactly as they are, we change the division to multiplication, and then we flip our second fraction. So it becomes times three over five. All right, since we have a three in our denominator and three in our numerator, they reduce to just one, and we can multiply across. Two times one is two, and one times five is five. So this will give us an answer of two over five. Nothing changes when we're doing it with rational expressions or rational equations. All right, remember, it could be a little bit harder because we're not going to be dealing with two, three, and five, and three, but it's the same steps. All right, so the first thing that we will do for this problem is we will rewrite the division as a multiplication. So it becomes two minus x over x squared plus two x plus one because the first fraction doesn't change. Then we change it to multiplication and then we flip our second fraction. x squared minus one over x squared plus three x minus 10. Nothing changed from when we were doing the, these numbers here, right? Same steps. Now, just like when we did our multiplication, we need to factor everything out that we can. So that way we can reduce and simplify. All right, we want our x's to be positive. So this two minus x, we will factor out and we will write this over here, two minus x. So we can factor out a negative one and that can be x minus two. All right, this one here in red, we'll factor out off to the side as well. So it'll be x squared plus two x plus one. Both of these are positive since that's plus. And then the factors of one that add up to two, or just one and one. All right, the next one, x squared minus one. We know since that's a difference of two squares, that will factor out to x plus one and x minus one. And then the last one, x squared plus three x minus 10. This tells us that they're different, so it's x plus and x minus. Factors of 10 have a difference of three or five and two. Since this is positive, five needs to be positive and two is negative. All right, you don't have to necessarily do it off to the side like I did here. Um, you could just factor them in its place. Uh, it's up to you. All right, I think doing them off to the side could be beneficial because you know exactly where um, you're giving yourself space to work out all the problems. All right, so the blue one factored out to negative one times x minus two. The red one factored out to x plus one times x minus one. The x squared minus one, the blue one, factored out to x plus one. Sorry, that was x plus one and x plus one. So this is x plus one and x minus one. And then the, the last one in black factored out to x plus five times x minus two. All right, now we're looking to see if we have any same factors on our numerator as we do in our denominator. Well, the x plus ones will cancel out and the x minus twos will cancel out. So now we're left with negative times x minus one over top of x plus one times x plus five. All right, remember, you do not actually have to multiply these two together. Uh, so this is your final answer. But then it says state any restrictions. So the restrictions are here, all right? It's any of these answers where they're zero. So it's the red and black factors. So it'll be x plus one cannot be equal to zero. I don't have to write it twice because it's the same factor. So x cannot be equal to negative one. And then x plus five cannot be equal to zero. Or x minus two cannot be equal to zero. So x cannot be equal to negative five. Or x cannot be equal to two. So our restrictions, our overall final restrictions, are x cannot be negative five, negative one, or two. All right, that is it for this video. And that's it for this section. The key is being able to simplify 
And in order to simplify, you must be able to factor. So if you're not sure of how to factor, then you need to go back and rewatch the factoring videos that I have on this channel. All right, that is it for this section.